Okay, welcome to another one of my videos. This one I'm going to be putting in an ACT uh, surface, a, a, a MIDI control surface to control sonar and effects and synths via ACT. I'm going to be using the ZR16. It's actually quite a good one to use because uh, it doesn't come with a preset which means I've got to go from scratch and also it's got some odd quirks like there's 12 rotaries rather than 8 and 4 faders on the on the completely MIDI, MIDI dedicated section. There are actually more than that for MIDI use but for the purposes of this demonstration that's what I'm going to use. Uh, so we'll see the difference between MIDI Learn and ACT Learn which is where I think a lot of confusion can come in sometimes. Uh, but I'm going to make some assumptions. I'm first off going to assume that you've got your MIDI surface connected uh, correctly and that the drivers if any are installed and that you have selected those drivers in preferences in sonar within preferences uh, MIDI devices and with that done I'm going to pull up the preferences by pressing P and go to control surfaces and as you can see there's a few here I've got already but I'm going to click a fresh uh, add new controller surface and go from scratch as you can see that brings up the uh, surface box there and we're going to go with the ACT MIDI controller. You can see here that if you've got something like a PCR uh, 300, 500 or the 800, they, they operate under that. There's also the A Pro, so there's some presets there uh, with a little bit more specialised than the, the, the generic ACT MIDI controller. One of the differences certainly with the PCR 300 surfaces it's got a ninth fader and that's included on that uh, surface controller but for anything that's not listed the ACT MIDI controller should work fine you just need to make sure that the input port is selected that happens to default to ZR16 on mine because that's the first one in the list the output port for the ACT MIDI controller can be set to none because ACT isn't two-way so it won't feed back any control information to the surface so if it's got motorized faders they won't work under ACT. Uh, with that being done we'll click on OK and as you can see that's added that ACT MIDI controller one there with the import and output selected as none. These boxes here that's uh, ACT just so that that actually acts as an ACT controller from within Sona. You can deselect that if you want but obviously for this demonstration we don't want that. The WAI where am I color and the selection there that's so that uh, when it's controlling the track strips etc within sonar you can actually see the colored strip as you can see up there actually uh, you can see the color strips there that's what that color over here does so that's that uh, and we're just gonna click on OK and that's done uh, to actually set up the surface now we need to bring up the properties dialog box and we do that from utilities menu and you can see there it is at the bottom act midi controller one so let's bring that up and center that again uh, let me see if i can zoom in on here you can see that uh, there's lots of presets available here uh, so you can see lots and lots of them and if your device is there by all means pull that up and it'll be ready mapped I've obviously got a couple of presets I've made myself there uh, but this video really just shows you how to do that so I'm not going to load that uh, so we click away from there so we start with the actual template here and the first thing we're going to do to set up a surface is to MIDI learn the keys. Now as you can see there's R1, R2, R3 which are for rotaries, S for slider presumably and then the buttons with the shift button key. Uh, but they can be set up however you want them. As I said earlier uh, I have 12 rotaries on the ZR so what I can actually do there is you can rename them uh, and just assign them to whatever you want. So if I just uh, show you how to do that you click on there and obviously you can rename that to something more sensible like uh, of course it would help if I didn't have my caps lock key on something a little bit more sensible like rotary 1 and you can go through the whole lot of there and again just because it's set as 1 for, for sliders it's just a preset doesn't mean it have to do that I actually changed mine on the 
Z to rotary 9. So uh, let's do that. And I'm not going to bore you to death with changing all the names of those. Uh, but that's how you do that. And along here, once I get to S5, I'd actually like to turn that into my uh, sliders or faders. I prefer the term fader, so I'm going to change that to fader 1. And uh, that's that done. And as I said, I'm not going to bore you to death with all of them, so I'm just going to uh, pause this now and change all of them uh, without you having to watch. So as you can see, that's uh, those now done. They're all known rotaries, uh, 1 to 12, and the faders. And so now I'm going to use MIDI Learn to teach this properties box which knob on my ZR16 this box corresponds to. Same with this one and this one, obviously, for all of them. To do that, we just click in the bottom, and you'll see that changes to MIDI Learn. Now I'm going to do is reach across to my ZR control surface and touch the first rotary. There you go, I'll just give that a little bit of a turn, as you can see that's now disappeared. And uh, same for the second one. And so on. Again, I'm not going to bore you to death by doing all of them. But you can see that uh, as soon as you touch it, it corresponds to that surface. So now it knows, I know when I turn the first knob, it's going to correspond to any parameter that is set in here. Second knob in there and so on with all the faders and buttons as well. And that's how you map them via MIDI Learn. Again, I'm going to do that without boring you to death, uh, so I'm just going to put on pause for a second. Okay, so that's that all mapped, uh, and it's much the same with the shift learn. If you have a shift button, or you can map any button you like to actually become the shift modifier, again, you just click on that, and click on the button, and that's that learn. So that's how you map uh, the knobs to the various cells here. And the next bit is to set up what the cells actually do. And that's done uh, in the strip view uh, or for track control via the options box. So you can see I'm not going to go through all of these because it's fairly obvious. The one thing I will touch on is the capture mode, jump and match. I personally prefer match. So I set both of them to that. The difference is, is that jump, if you have a knob on 100%, so say you've been using a controller pan uh, control for example on a track and you have a track panned fully right then you switch to perhaps a delay effect or something like that and that knob then becomes the control for the delay time for example if it's on jump as soon as you touch that knob the uh, delay control in the, the in the delay would jump to 100 uh, percent and that's probably not what you want certainly not what I want when I use it so I uh, go with match uh, and what happens there is when you turn the knob as it gets down to around about the area that the parameter set at it sort of picks up the uh, parameter and then starts to move it so I find that a little bit more intuitive but obviously that's a personal preference uh, just very briefly the rotaries here you can see that there's four banks so you get four lots of control if you like uh, and the, the rotaries can be set for whatever you want volume pan send same with the sliders uh, and the buttons here are labelled, obviously B1 all the way through to B8, Shift B8, and you can select various functions from within Soda. There's lots of uh, lots of functions in there, not in a particular order, so not the easiest thing in the world to work with. But you can set the buttons to do more or less whatever you want. And we're going to move on briefly now to the actual Act control, uh, which is I'm sure what most people are more interested in. We've got the Active Controller Technology button here, and if we enable that, at the moment, as you can see, we're on strip parameters. Uh, but if we enable that, whatever we click on now will become the active uh, part of what we're controlling. So if I just uh, zoom out a second, you can see everything. If I activate this audio track and now click on the compressor, as you can see, the at controls now move to control the track compressor with the various rotaries and sliders uh, and obviously if it had any buttons and stuff here but as you can see my shift buttons B1, B2, B3, B4 
aren't part of ACT at the moment and that's controlled, I should have mentioned that here, that's controlled from here. We can exclude a button from ACT which is handy if you're using a button uh, on a device and when you switch to ACT if you want it to always do the function that you've set it to do you exclude it from ACT and then ACT won't pick it up and use that, that button at all. So that's how you control what does what there. But the reason I've switched onto this is really just to show the ACT learn function. So there's the track compressor and there's the various rotaries there that we set earlier. So if I want uh, rotary 1's on input, that's fine. Rotary 2, attack, release, 4's ratio. That's how Sona presents it. But if I don't like that particular order, uh, I can change that. So if I wanted the uh, ratio, for example, on rotary 2, we need to use Act Learn. Now to do that, we just click on the Act button, which highlights that. Now Act Learn is now active, and it's simply a matter of using the control on the effect or synth, like that, and then actually turning the rotary on the device. So I've just clicked on Ratio and turned my second rotary, and now when I deselect the Act Learn, you can see it's now saying one parameter and one control with touch. Do you want to keep these assignments? Obviously, if you don't click on no, but I do, so I click yes, and you can now see rotary two is now controlling the ratio. So if uh, I just turn that, you can see the ratio moving as I turn that second knob. So that's how you use act uh, assign, uh, and that's really where I think a lot of confusion comes in between the MIDI learn and act assign. Uh, and that's really it because whatever you click on now, again I'll just leave this open and open up uh, this audio track and stick in an effects. If I just load a delay, the Sinatus delay, and you can see straight away the ACT controller is now controlling that as that is the active, uh, active window. Also doubles that down here. There's also down in the control bar, if you want it visible, there's also the ACT module which will display uh, what's there. So let's get rid of a few of these uh, and bring up the ACT module so you can see that. There we go. I don't know if you can see that down at the bottom there. That's actually just a, a, a mini menu of what's there. So bring up the ACT controller and you can see what it's actually control in there. So that's quite handy as well, but like I say, it's really just a matter of clicking on the thing that you want to control and it automatically does it. The Act Learn, if you uh, don't like the order of these or want to change them round, you just simply click on that and then make the changes by clicking on the control in there. I'll do that once more. If we want to control, say, the mix right, uh, I want that on Rotary 3, so swap Rotary 1 and Rotary 2 round. If I click on Mix Right, uh, and then move the second rotary and then I'll click on mix left and move the first rotary now when I click on the act learn button two parameters two controls were touched and you'll see that when I change that these two will turn round so the mix right actually moves onto the right hand button and mix left onto the left and there you go as you can see so that's a little bit more intuitive maybe than the uh, way it works at the moment but anyway, I hope that helps. I hope I haven't brushed over it too much. And if there are any questions, please feel free to visit the Cakewalk forums and post them there where there'll be plenty of people, I'm sure, as well as myself, that'll help. Uh, and thanks for watching.